What do you say to those people that will say, oh, well, I want to get down to 12% before I gain again. In their mind, they're like, they're not, you can tell they're not happy with the current look because they feel like they're too fluffy. So it's always like, I'm scared to gain weight. So, hey, let me cut first so I can gain weight. And in a sense, it's like, well, why don't you just stay where you're at and just let's train and put some more more muscle on? Because like we talked about earlier about the muscle is going to look better the bigger it is, right? Even if you have a little bit extra body fat there, you're going to look better with more muscle. So why spend more time away from the bigger picture and diet down from let's say 17% or 16% body fat down to this arbitrary 12%, 10%, and then come back up. Like, what would be the point of that? Like, what would you tell someone who's, who's wanting to do that first? That's like, that's like such red flag, like talk to me. Like I need to get to this body. Because Mm -hmm. usually most people don't even know what that looks like, you Mm -hmm. know, like to start, right. Usually just means like a general level of happiness, of, of, of leanness that will make me happy. But you know how it is. It's like, you just want a little bit more. It's like, you know, let's just say you do get them to that body fat. They're so not going to like to, you know, the Pope turning around at that point. It's like, well, there go your abs, right? Or whatever landmarks in your body you wanted to be able to see. Because generally, in my experience, it has been a big red flag when people are like, I need to get to this weight. I need to get to this body fat. We have a big discussion usually about their dieting history. And more often than not, it, it's been a lot of failed attempts to get to 12% body fat. And and it's like, hey, if we spend some time away from like this trauma zone, get you back over here, develop some really good habits, at, which again, they're easier to build at higher body fat levels. Maybe you have less resistance next time on the way down and you look better than you would have this time anyways. You know, uh, that's, that's usually how that convo goes. Because usually when they say that they've tried this many times and they've yet to reach their goal of that magical body fat. Yeah. Cause I have one guy in particular that, uh, he's very adamant about cutting first before going back up. Um, and what's interesting is never really pushed his body weight up. So that was kind of unknown territory. (laughs) So it was almost like you says, like kind of just wanting to go towards a comfort zone what he thought maybe it was going to be a happy place. And I kind of knew like if I didn't roll with it, that he probably would just do his own yeah. thing or go mm-hmm. elsewhere. So I'm like, all right, let me, let me just cut him down, do it properly. So that way it's done right. Well, I mean, long story short, we get there down to where he wanted to go. And he realized like, I don't have no muscle. <laughs> like mm-hmm. there's no muscle here. So it's like, okay. Then he had a lot more buy-in to the gain. And he actually committed to a full-blown gaining phase and went Excellent. way up out of his comfort zone. And long story short, we came back down again. And yeah, I mean, we, we looked better at the same body weight on the way down versus the first time gained a couple pounds of muscle, not a huge amount, but there was significant progress visually. But sometimes, you know, people just have to experience things firsthand before you kind of get that buy-in. Our collective experience, right? Like we can tell someone, hey, this is for your own good. But sometimes, yeah, you just have to kind of walk people through the the experiences to really get it to sink in. But I mean, now we actually took him through a cut, went through a proper gaining phase, went through another cutting phase. In a sense, now he knows how to manipulate his body composition. Like he's really good at it. And he's he's got those skills that you talked about, Berto, because on the way up, you know, a lot of those things he was doing with family and all that, he's able to, to duplicate it on the way down. So I think mm-hmm. it's pretty important um, that people go through these experiences. No, I agree. Like sometimes you let them make their mistake. And, and I, I think what you do is you're breaking it down for them. Like, okay, this is what I think is happening because we've, we've made all of them. So, you know, we, we can call them out as they happen. And sometimes, first of all, you gain their trust, but also it, they tend to absorb like and they're able to put into words what's actually going on right now with with their bodybuilding but yeah no i agree sometimes it's like all right well i guess all right smoke the whole pack of cigarettes i don't think dad's actually ever did that <laughs> kids, but, but it's, it's one of those deals and i'll just i'll supervise right the majority of your bodybuilding like realistically is going to be spent at body fat levels that maybe that they're not i guess your your photo shoot ready you know, yeah. and I think when it's all said and done, when I look at my highlight film, like honestly, like a good chunk of the highlights happen on that end, just mm-hmm. as much on as, as on the other side. I, I know that for sure with myself, I'm always like a few PRs away from like, if I'm having like these like bad, like body image days away from like feeling like pretty good. At, you know, it's like yeah, I put down the dumbbells and I'm like, oh, yeah, this I is worth it. it. <laughs>